inside the five. It'll be first and goal, Carter. Nice job by Carter, Scott, of mixing up their plays. That time, Judson double team um, Marcus Grant on the right side, on the left side, and they went back to the right side to David Jones on a slanting pattern. He almost takes it into the end zone. Right now, right now. Hendricks and Gray on the coverage for Judson. But not before Carter picks up a first down. First and goal from the two. Harper in for six. So after close to a full quarter of scoreless football with four seconds left in the opening period, Carter cracks the scoreboard and takes it in for six. The extra point is up, and it's good. Jeff Hunt puts the Cowboys on top, seven to nothing. See, it's just a, a rollout, excuse me, not a rollout, but just a quick pivot in the back of by quarterback Hall, and he gives it to Harper, who takes it over the top. For the first touchdown again from two, for, for the game from the for the game from two yards out. I'm getting excited up here, Scott. <laughs> well, I'm a little surprised that Carter has been able to come back the way they have. They had a fumble, they lost an interception, and they still come back, hold them defensively, and then take it down the field when Robert Hall checks back into the ball game after the early injury and now have a seven nothing lead. Well, Scott, this team has been able to overcome adversity all season long, not only on the off the field, but on the field as well. Last week against Odessa, they were behind twice in that football game, and each time they got behind, they came back to make it, make the plays to get themselves back in the lead. And of course, they won that ball game, 14 to nine. in the red jerseys this afternoon. They are the home team. As a result, that's why the game is being played here at Texas Stadium. Converse Judson lost six coin flips during the course of the playoffs. They were a perfect 0-6. Vincent Kyle will down it in the end zone. And the Judson Rockets will have the ball again offensively. With four seconds left of the opening quarter of play, they trail by seven. Judson Rockets brought a lot of fans up here from the San Antonio area. They have one special fan back in San Antonio, Scott, who couldn't make this game. Jason Mock is a Converse Judson freshman. He's in the Methodist Hospital in San Antonio with a critical illness. And uh, we'd just like to wish him uh, a Merry Christmas and hopefully a speedy recovery. We know he's down there pulling for the Justin Rockets. We certainly do. Give us to Kyle Arnell, and we'll talk about him a great deal of the afternoon. He's only a sophomore, only stands 5'7", 155. And that's the end of the first quarter of play. Carter leading Judson by a score of 7 to nothing. We'll be back. Don't miss this big one-day art sale Sunday at the Marriott Hotel in Austin. Sofa-sized oil paintings as low as $19. Other oil paintings start at $10. Many of these beautiful hand-painted oils sell elsewhere for up to $400. Professional art at starving artist prices. Good selection of wood and gold frames at discount prices. See how economically you can decorate your home and office. Last sale of the year, just in time for Christmas giving. One day only, Sunday at the Marriott, I-35 North at Highway 290 in Austin. Credit cards and checks accepted, 11 to 5 Sunday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you got a leak here. Somewhere in the wall. I just hope I can get to it before it gets too bad. At times like this, now you can choose this. New maximum strength Pepto-Bismol. Now there's twice the medicine, twice the Pepto. Ah. The spirit of Texas. KBBO TV 42, Austin. Order 
is being brought to you by Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. And by the heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. Harvey Harper in for the first six of the ball game. This guy, they had great blocking the offensive line. They created nice space in there, nice real estate for Harper to go right over the top for the first time, first touchdown of the game. You see the, uh, the scoring drive took 10 plays, 62 yards, and ate up three minutes and 38 seconds. Kind of puts Judson in a rather precarious situation. I mean, I'd hate to be behind Carter early in a ball game like this with that defense. Right, and Justin does not like to be behind because they are a running football team. What they're going to have to do in the second quarter is to show a little more versatility in their offense to try to get back in this football game. Pick up of one on the first play of the second quarter. It is now second and nine. Play action to the left side. It's picked off. Edwards has the ball, and it's down to about the 10-yard line. Gary Edwards, who on the year already has five interceptions, makes it number six, and it's a big one. have some excellent athletes in their defensive secondary. Jesse Armstead, their linebacker, gets a lot of publicity. Derek Evans, their strong safety, is an All-American. He gets a lot of publicity. But their cornerbacks, led by Gary Edwards, they have the best, two of the best cornerbacks in the state. And you see Edwards anticipating the throw, stepping right in front of Stan Stanzioni, right, and making the interception. First and 10 from the 12. They go up top right away. Touchdown, Carter. Ryan Mitchell. So the first turnover of the afternoon on the part of Judson is a costly one. Yeah, there's a replay there. Brian Mitchell is probably one of the most versatile athletes on this Carter football team. He's the backup quarterback. He plays some tailback. He has caught this year six passes for 74 yards, and that's his first, ta first touchdown reception this year. He's also the holder on extra points, so we'll be calling his name out quite a bit, I'm sure, today, Scott. So Carter will try and up that lead to 14 to nothing. Stephen McKnight will now attempt the extra point. Carter, for no obvious reason, alternates place kickers. If one fella kicks a field goal, the next guy gets a chance to kick the extra point. Somebody else come back with the ensuing kickoff, and back and forth, and back and forth it goes. Freddie James says, either guy's better than the other. We just like to alternate them. This time, it's Nick Knight that gets the call, and the kick is up and good, and we'll be back with more right after this. Carter leading the Rockets by a score of 40, 14 to nothing. We're here at the National Space Satellite Dish, where for three days in a row, scientists have received messages from deep space. Dr. Gilbert. At precisely 12 noon, we have received the signal. And now, as the hour of 12 approaches, we listen for these strange sounds. It's no mystery where great refreshment comes from. Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. The new 130 horsepower multi-port fuel injected Chevy Cavalier Z24. Everyone should feel this powerful at least once in their lives. The heartbeat of America. That's today's Chevrolet. When you think of all the fun it gives you, the new Chevy Cavalier just could be one of the best bargains you've ever driven. Ooh, the heartbeat of America. Chevrolet. That's today's Chevrolet. Picture me, picture you, picture all the things we do. Who can you trust with your holiday memories? H-E-B Photo Place for quality prints. We're on the Kodak Color Watch system, so the colors are bright, the image is just right. Or H-E-B Photo Place will give you your money back. How can you miss? Picture that, picture this, you just can't miss. 
H-E-B Photo Place. You see on the replay there, Robert Hall gets the time to throw the ball. He throws it before Mitchell even looks. Mitchell makes a nice reaction on the play. And you can see Hall, he's pretty happy about that touchdown pass to Brian Mitchell. Took only one play, 12 yards and all but four seconds, but it's good for six more points. And Carter leads by a score of 14 to nothing. Let's go down to the sidelines, Chris Fowler. Okay, fellas, a stunned reaction on the part of the Judson defense. We tell you they shut out four of their last five opponents. They're not used to giving up 14 points in just over a quarter. The coaches have spent time trying to adjust the defensive scheme and protect against the quick hitting passes the card has been so successful with. Guys? All right, Chris, thank you much. Scott, on that, excuse me, on that play, Gary Edwards made the interception. And we talk about versatile play uh, in Brian Mitchell, but Gary Edwards is a versatile player also. He's the leading scorer for the Carter Cowboys with 84 points. He's the second leading rusher, and that was just his sixth interception of the year. Harold Jones gets the call on the kickoff for Carter, and it's taken at the one. Tripped up. Nice, nice tackle. Dedrick Clark. We have to see if the Judson Rockets can figure out this defense for the Carter Cowboys. They call themselves the 11-man posse. And like I said, they have 11 players who run 4-6 or better in their defense. They like to take chances in their defense. And they can take those chances because they have excellent speed. First and 10 for Judson from their own 16-yard line. Pitch back. Got some room. This is sophomore sensation we alluded to earlier in the ballgame. He's only a sophomore, 155 pounds, all of 5'7". Looks something like the Atlanta Hawks' Bud Webb, of course, who grew up here in Dallas. But how about his numbers in 1988? 1,094. And that average, 7.9 yards per, per carry. Last year, this guy was playing freshman football on the freshman football team. But he's speed. It doesn't start. He doesn't like to start. He feels more comfortable coming in the game once the game gets started. And you're going to see him play, uh, be in the game quite a bit more after running, uh, making a run like that, Scott. Pickup of over 20 yards. And again, he gets the call. Arnell across the 40-yard line to about the 42. Jetson's trying to get it going. They're trying to get it going with their running game. And Kyle Arnell right now is the man they're going to. Jesse Armstead on the tackle. And we've got a Judson player down on the field. While we have players injured on the field, we don't know who it, who it is. We'll throw it back to you, Scott. All right, and we'll take a brief timeout with Carter leading Judson by a score of 14 to nothing. We'll be right back. Time and temperature. It's back in Austin. Call 973-3555. During the holidays, I'm always forgetting something. But I find what I want at Payless Gas. It's not just a convenience store. It's my neighborhood store. Quench your holiday thirst with two liter Coke products, just 99 cents each. And pick up a Herbie's Fast and Hot Deli style sandwich and get a grab bag of chips free this week at Payless. Payless Gas. What I want, when I want it. Make this Christmas special with a piano or keyboard from Piano Outlet's pre-Christmas sale. Save 20, 30, even 50% on new and used pianos and keyboards. Select from such famous names as Baldwin, Kimball, Kawhi, Yamaha, Young Chang, and more. New grand pianos from $39.89. New consoles from $16.89. New digital pianos from $6.89. Keyboards from $189. You'll find it all at Piano Outlet's pre-Christmas sale weekdays and Saturday 10 to 7, Sunday 12 to 6. Piano Outlet, North Lamar at Airport Boulevard. Hi, my name is Jose Salazar. I'm from Austin, Texas. I'd like to say hi to my mother and all of Austin. I'm here in Spangdal Air Base, West Germany. Uh, having a great time. Wish you were here. Merry Christmas to everybody. Welcome back. You see uh, teammates attending to Todd Harrison, the offensive tackle on the right side. Probably the most consistent ball player on that offensive line. And he's out of the ball game, was favoring his left knee. Look at this. They run to the line to try and get Carter. That didn't do anything. Try to catch Carter. 
off guard. They broke the huddle and all ran up there as quickly as they could. And Armstead was right there to cover up as he has been all season. Yeah, it's going to take a little more than that to fool Jesse Armstead. And he's their leading tackler, as you can see there on, the, on your screen. And what makes Jesse Armstead an All-American linebacker is his speed. He runs 4-5 in a 40-yard dash, plus he bench presses over 300 pounds. Third and seven. And there's a fumble on the play. Corner players are signaling they've recovered it. We'll wait for the fellas in the black and white stripes. Scott, one thing the Houston, uh, the Jets and Rockets will do is fumble the football. And here is number 32, Vincent Kyle, who has fumbled the ball five times this year and lost it four times. And here's his sixth fumble. That, but Rockets were able to recover it. Now they got to punt the football. Let's pause five seconds for station identification. This is TVG Sports. This is KBVO TV 42, Austin. Marcus Grant on the punt return. And another flag on the play. Luis Silva on the tackle, and we'll find out what the call is. Clipping against Converse Judson. So with that penalty, we'll take a quick timeout. 9.39 left in the half. Cowboys lead the Rockets 14 to nothing. We'll be right back. That's it. It's over. We have nothing in common. I never agreed on one thing. Ever. Great. I need to find someone. More like me. When you find something you have so much in common with, something so exciting, so refreshing. Hi. Hi. You just can't stop yourself from grabbing it and holding on to it forever. For the great taste of Pepsi without caffeine, try caffeine-free Pepsi. When I was a girl, little boys wore knickers, and we did our shopping at the corner store. Well, knickers are out. Oh, <laughs> But the corner store is back at Diamond Shamrock. They've got milk, bread, eggs, <laughs> medicines, <laughs> health and beauty stuff, and I can charge anything I like, except in knickers. Their history. There's gas and groceries at your just around the corner store, Diamond Shamrock. Get hip, America. Lose the knickers. Get one of these. <laughs> see Marcus Grant on this. He's trying to do a little shake and bake, and as he does that, there's going to be a clip on the play. You see it right in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen, the clip, and that's why Carter's backed up now inside their own five. First and ten. And a gain of maybe four, maybe five at the most. Allen, the running back, has not played all that much this year. We are told the injury is not that bad to Todd Harrison being attended to on the near sideline. So he'll likely be back. They gave him three on the last play, so it'll be second and seven. Pitch back. Mitchell around the right side's got some room. Jumps over a couple of ball players. And picks up a first down before he's finally run out of bounds. Darnell Stevens, the corner, on the coverage. Scott, again, we see the versatility of Brian Mitchell. We just see him catch a touchdown pass. Now he takes a pitch out from Robert Hall and tries to get outside. Good blocking. Hall there gets in the way of one guy and springs Mitchell for a nice gain. So first and 10, Carter from their own 24. Harper. And Mike.
make work. Excited about the loss on that play of about two or three yards. Scott, that type of play is tough to run against the Rocket defense because they're a reading defense, and it's a slow-developing play. And when those slow-developing plays happen, usually the Rockets are going to be there to put the fire out. That's time, that time they stop. Number six, Harvey Harper. Nice play by Mike Work, number 52. Ball is spotted on the 21. It is second and 13. Three backs, Marcus Grant gets the call. Judson players thought he had fumbled, but the whistle had already blown the play dead. Tackle made by Derwin Gray. Strong safety up to help out. That time Carter was able to sneak Marcus Grant in the backfield. There he is trying to find room to the outside. Does find some room. Gets, a, gets hit on the play and loses the ball as he hits the ground. That's one thing Coach Freddie James does. He takes advantage of the abilities of all the athletes and gives all the athletes a chance to show what, they're, what they can do with that ability. Whether Marcus Grant is, probably, is the best receiver on the team but also gets opportunity to run the football. Grant got back to the original line of scrimmage. Brings up a third and ten from the 24. Four wide receivers. They go to Grant. Okay, we got a little controversy on the, the play before that, Scott. You see here a fumble. The ball is coming out, but I don't think it comes out until it hits the ground. And as we all know, the ground cannot cause a fumble. Carter came up short by about a yard and a half. So they are forced to punt. Darnell Stevens will be the lone punt returner. Good kick. Drives him way back. He's going to feel it inside his own 20. It takes a Carter bounce inside the 10. He finally decides to pick it up, and he is just brought down by a bunch there. The posse in full force there to cover up. So Judson deep in their own territory will take over offensively here in the second quarter with 707 left in the half. They trail by 14. We'll be right back. This is Gene Peterson warning you not to miss the holiday blast-off sale. Going on now at Kuppenheimer. Thousands of suits, sport coats, slacks, and shirts have been price slashed. Now you'll find wool blend suits as low as $99.90. Dress slacks starting at $14 a pair. And a huge selection of long sleeve dress shirts and silk ties at $5.90 each. Get great-looking menswear at a fraction of what you'd expect to pay during the holiday blast-off sale. Going on now at Kuppenheimer. What's the number one sandwich maker up to? Designing a new Subway sub? No, I'm planning a Subway sale, and you better start baking. <gasps> Hot bread coming through. We bake them fresh. We make them fresh. Every, everybody loves Subway Try our three hot sandwiches. Meatball, Subway steak and cheese, and new barbecue. They're hot, hot, Subway hot. Welcome back to Texas Stadium on a sunny Saturday afternoon. Just a perfect day for football and a perfect day thus far for the Cowboys of Carter High School. And again, the rushed offense. They break the huddle, run to the line, try and catch Carter off guard, and again, nothing doing. Second time today that Judson has broken the huddle and literally rushed and raced up to the line. Quick snap, and for the second time today, nothing doing. Today's game is being carried on radio statewide by Diamond Shamrock Oil Company with Warren Hussey and Mike Fox. Shamrock has carried the four and five A football playoffs since 1966. Vincent Kyle on the carry around the near side. Jesse Armstead there again to make the tackle for Carter. Jesse Armstead has to tra uh, track down the play. He usually gets there before the ball carrier has room to, to find a hole here. And Jesse Arms 
Armstead, uh, you see here on the replay, well, not on this particular play, we see the yards here and so far in this football game, and Carter is definitely uh, dominating so far. Third and ten. Delayed draw, and again, nothing doing. Derek Cherry on the tackle. As Vincent Kyle, the rusher on that last play, comes off the field. It's a sprint draw. They try to, that's their favorite play in a passing situation. But I guess Carter scouted that play out, and they were right there. Carter's defensive front, led by Jeffrey McInnes, Derek Cherry, and Joe Tibbs. Fourth down inside his own end zone. Grant Fields adjusted to 39 and then runs it out of bounds. So Borfall has certainly had his share of practice in the punting department this afternoon. And again, Carter will take over offensively first and 10. Well, the thing about this guy, Carter once again has good field position. And when the field is this short with the athletes Carter Score Carter has as you see the score there 14 and nothing with 519 left in the second quarter of the first half and the Carter athletes can uh, operate with that type of field position it makes puts a lot of pressure on that Jetson defense. Freddie James said earlier this week his number one priority in this ball game would be to jump in front early put as much pressure offensively on the defense of Judson. And we've got a timeout on the field, so we'll make note of the fact that at the conclusion of today's ballgame, Drew and I will be selecting the most valuable player for this year's 5A championship game. The most valuable player is sponsored by Pepsi. Pepsi will present the school with a $500 contribution to their general high school scholarship fund, as well as a plaque on his behalf that coming up immediately following the ballgame here at Texas Stadium. 519 left in the first half. And the Carter Cowboys with an early 14-0 lead. They have trailed in three of the five playoff games they have played prior to coming into today's, today's ball game. But now find themselves with a very comfortable lead of 14 to nothing early. They have dominated this ball game throughout. Scott, that's one thing Justin did not want to do in this ball game. As we mentioned earlier, they are a running football team and they don't throw the the football that much 12 passes is a high for this team as far as throwing the football this year ready to resume play Robert Hall will call the shots with three backs behind him he'll pass Nobody opens, so he'll run, and he'll still pick up about five yards. Brent McCollum of Judson on the tackle. There's Robert Hall. You see him operating in the backfield. He's a good ball handler. He hides the ball. He comes out on the rollout, looks downfield. There's nothing there. So what's that mean? He's got to tuck that ball under his arm and watch this little spin move to avoid the big hit and get out of bounds for a nice little gain for Robert Hall. Officially six yards for Robert Hall. As you see the time left in the first half of play. Second and four now from the 34 of Judson. Hall a little heavy on the feet. Simply fell down <laughs> under his own power. So uh, a tough break indeed, but uh, it'll be a loss of about seven or eight and bring up third and 12. That time Hall trying to get out of there uh, from under the center. Looked like he got stepped on by the center or the pulling guard on that play and just went down. And it's a big loss and a big break for the Rockets. Third and 12 now from the 42. Hall again looking for time and he's got his receiver across the right side. That's Jones. That's four receptions on the afternoon now for Jones. 
Well, the Rockets are a reading defense, and Carter's giving them something to read. Every time with that play-action pass, you see that's what gives uh, Robert Hall time, and it gives time for David Jones to work open into the defensive secondary. And again, he's a tough man to bring down. That time he's tackled by number 47, Robert Reed. Brings up fourth and two, and Freddie James says, let's go for it, guys, from the 32. Last man through looks to be Harvey Harper, who scored the touchdown. When a Carter Cowboys need a tough yard, whether it's going for a first down or going in the end zone for a touchdown, the man they'd like to go to is Harvey Harper. He's their leading ball carrier, but he only has 442 yards for the year. 4.9 average. There he is going over the top, and we're going to have a measurement to see if Harvey Harper was able to pick up the first down for Carter. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, Drew and I will recap all the first half highlights. We'll feature some great exhibitions by both school bands. This is with Dr. Bailey Marshall from the UIL and Dallas Cowboys head coach Tom Landry reflects back on his high school football years as a quarterback at Mission High School in Texas. First down for Carter. Ball on the 29. And they're looking for more. What a great move. Grant on the reception. Robert Hall is such a cool cookie back in that pocket. Well, the time that Robert Hall has to throw this football, a lot of it is made on his own because his ability to move around and, and find open areas so he can find Marcus Grant. Marcus Grant, as you see, now has four receptions for 35 yards. You see Hall there. Again, the play action, that gives, gives him time to throw the football. He'll move up into the pocket, and Grant will work free in the end zone, and a nice catch by Marcus Grant. First and 10 from the 19. Oh, what a sensational catch. Dietrich Clark on the reception, number 17. And a flag in the play. I believe the flag, Scott, is going to be pass interference, but Clark was able to avoid the contact and, and make the catch anyway. Dietrich Clark, nice catch. Nice hands, Dietrich. You like those good hands, huh? There is a good shot at Detrick Clark, the senior cornerback. But again, Freddie James knows his, his personnel. He sticks Detrick Clark in there as a receiver, and he comes up with a, a nice reception. Now they're trying to, they're thinking about where the spot's going to be, Scott. And uh, looks like it might be another first down for the Carter Cowboys. Officials discussing the situation with Robert Hall on the near sideline. Three oh one left in the first half and Carter looking for more. They lead 14 nothing. Scott Carter has 10 first downs. And they get another one here. Pretty, things are pretty much going uh, the way uh, Carter wants it to. And uh, again, their athletes are, sh sh in the, are showing the domination, and that's showing why Carter has been 13-0-1 so far this year. They get the first down, brings up first and goal from the nine. Harvey Harper spins his way in for a couple more. Freddie James has one of the best little slogans on his wall after all the adversity that he has gone through over the last five or six weeks it says you have to be crazy to work here but it helps <laughs> Judson thus far penalized twice for 25 yards Carter penalized once for five yards and we've got yet another timeout on the field so let's get out of the sidelines and Chris Fowler Okay, fellas, you know, coaches have a tendency to be a little bit superstitious, and Freddie James is one of the most superstitious coaches I've ever met. He goes through a ritual of eating three lollipops before each game. He's done this for quite a while. However, he never eats 
peanuts. It goes back to the days when he was a college football player. His teammates told him peanuts were jinx. He didn't believe it. He ate some peanuts. And then during a game against Texas Southern, he was running free for a touchdown and fell down. And he says it goes back to the days from eating peanuts in college. He never eats them. doesn't allow his players to eat them. It's one of my favorite foods, <laughs> Phoenix. I've been lost without peanuts. Well, that's uh, part of the game, superstitions, and uh, that's an unusual one for sure. <laughs> Carter has taken its final timeout, but they still have plenty of time to score here again in the second quarter of play. 2.32 left. And Freddie James, who began his coaching career in 1963, said he did everything, including driving the bus. <laughs> Well, what Justin needs to do, Justin needs to come up with a big play, try to keep Carter out of the end zone, because if Carter gets in uh, with another touchdown, boy, it's going to be tough to come back on these Cowboys, especially with, the ty again, the type of offense that the Rockets run. Second down and seven from the seven. Harper again. Touchdown, Carter. Touchdown number three in the afternoon for the Carter Cowboys. And they take a commanding 20 to nothing lead with 228 still left to be played here in the second quarter. The extra point will be attempted this time by Harold Jones. It's up and it's good. And we stand 21 nothing. Carter trying to become the first team since 1950 in the city of Dallas to win a title. When they get in tight and they need the big yardage, sir, the tough yardage inside, they go to Harvey Harper. And once again, he gets nice blocking up front, led by Terry Dillard on that left side, Joe Birch. And Harvey Harper is able to take it in for a second touchdown of the afternoon. Carter High School, of course, with all the adversity and all the controversy that has taken place in the courts and off the field. There are many that think this team could still be stripped of its title should they win here this afternoon. As they lead by a score of 21 to nothing with 228 left here in the second quarter. No team has ever been stripped of a state title since 1959 when Stanford was forced to forfeit to runner up Brady. So close to 30 years ago it happened and we'll have to wait till the first of March if indeed Carter holds on and wins here today to see if that will happen again. But right now, Carter is in command. They lead 21-0, 2.28 left, and they are about to kick off. Harold Jones will handle the kickoff. Kyle and Stevens, the deep men. It'll be Stevens. Inside his own 10, looking for room on the near side. Maybe to the 20 at the most. Before he is finally run out of bounds by Jason Franks. Well, we see the touchdown once again. This time, Robert Hall goes right down the line of scrimmage as it hands off to Harvey Harper. And again, the blocking up front by the Carter defensive li uh, offensive line caves the Rockets' defensive line in. Harper just takes it to the outside, breaks a couple tackles for the easy score. Seven plays, 40 yards, and only 251. Welcome back to live action, first and 10 from the 20. And Clifton Abraham on the tackle. Kyle Arnell, again the ball carrier, number 22 in white. Well, the Rockets need to get something going, try to carry some momentum. There's a Carter scoring drive, seven plays, 40 yards, capped off by Harper's six-yard TD run, his second of the afternoon. But the Rockets have to get something going. They try to establish uh, some momentum going into the locker room at halftime here, so they come back in the second half ready to go. Bumble on the play, Arnell loses the ball, and it looks as though Carter has it. Cedric Buckley. Scott, just as we say, the, the Rockets need to get something going. They turn the ball over, and Buckley's there to 
to make the recovery for the Carter Cowboys. Arnell has fumbled the ball seven times this year, and looks like he just drops it on that play. And Buckley's right in there, number 50, 57, Savage, made the hit, but Buckley was able to come up with the recovery. So Carter has a minute 41 left to be played here in the second quarter of play. Turnovers, turnovers are even thus far today, Judson and Carter. But it is Carter that has capitalized on them. And they lead 21 to nothing and a chance to even add to that score. First and 10 from the 26. Mitchell down inside the 15. And finally, brought down by Daryl Johnson, the free safety. This play, Scott, was set up to be a halfback option pass. You see Mitchell there looking to throw the football. His receivers are all covered downfield. Mitchell tucks it under his arm and runs upfield for a nice gain. Carter does not have any timeouts, but they're moving the football well with 126 and counting, Scott. It'll be first and 10 at about the 12-yard line as Robert Hall yells to his receivers. Single setback. Three wide receivers now. Check it. Four wide receivers. The pitch back. Ryan Mitchell and Mike Wirt there to make the stop. And a loss on the play of about two. As the clock continues to run with 55 and counting. Mike Wirt there. We get a good shot of him. He's not big. He plays defensive uh, left end for the Judson Rockets. He only goes about uh, 180 pounds, but he's one tough football player. Pass intended for number 17, Dedrick Clark. And broken up by Mike Hendricks. But that'll stop the clock with 32 seconds left. On that play, Scott, the Carter just tried to go over the top. Uh, Mike Hendricks, number 40, the cornerback on the play, is a sophomore. Played on the freshman team last year, but he does have three interceptions this year and almost comes up with another one. That would have been a big play for the Judson Rockets. They need something like that to try to establish themselves. There's Coach Freddie James on the sidelines, and everything's going his way so far. They would like to get a score here in these remaining 32 seconds in the first half. Harvey Harper checks into the backfield. Third and 12 now. 32 seconds left. Carter leads it. 21 nothing. The ball on the 14. Flags on the play. Delay of game. That's the call. So that'll take it five yards back. And it'll be third and 17. Well, that might hurt him, Scott, as it's a third down situation. It's third and 17. Third and uh, 12 is really not much difference, but what might hurt them is if they don't get it on the first down on this play, and that, that penalty might knock them out of field goal position. Marcus Grant, number one, checks into the ball game as you see the penalties. Basically, even at this point, the key has been turnovers, and Carter has capitalized. Nine seconds and counting on the game clock. He picks it up, gets a good bounce, and he's down at about the 30-yard line. Mike Reed. So that'll take him likely out of field goal position. Now they're going to try it anyway. Nine seconds and counting. Stephen McKnight, it's his turn to give it a shot. Four seconds left. The kick is up. And it is good. Oh, my. What a dandy. And that's the end of the first half. The Cowboys lead the Rockets by a score of 24 to nothing. What a surprise. <laughs> it's got unbelievable. That was, a, I believe, a 45-yard field goal attempt. And uh, 45, right. 45-yarder. Unbelievable. And uh, everything's been going the way the Carter Cowboys want. Now let's get down to Chris Fowler. Okay, fellas, I'm with Judson Coach Rutledge. Tough first half here. Team not really set up as a comeback team. How do you change the offensive plan in the second half? Just do whatever we need to do to try to win. That's all we can do. Do you go away from the running game more, though, trying to make up 24 points? 
we do what we do best. We try to do what we do best, and some of it's passed and some of it's wrong. Okay, but you're still kids, you're still kids still believe, you think, in the halftime here? I believe in them. Okay, thanks very much, yeah. Coach. Tough. They were worried about the speed of Carter coming into this game. That has been the deciding factor. And I know Coach is going to talk about the tackling. The defense just has not tackled well, guys. All right, Chris, thank you much. Cowboys lead the Rockets of Judson by a score of 24 to nothing. Our halftime is here. We'll be back with more right after this. See Austin's only continuous antique show at the Austin Antique Mall. 30,000 square feet of antiques, arts, collectibles, jewelry, glassware, and more. 100 individual dealers with something for everyone. Find that one-of-a-kind gift or something special for yourself at Austin Antique Mall. Open 10 to 6 every day except Tuesday until 9 p.m. Thursdays till Christmas. There's never an admission charge. Discover Austin Antique Mall, 8822 McCann, behind Town North Nissan. Sundance Apartments is where it's happening in the South this season. Like parties at the clubhouse, a great place to meet new friends. Or daily sessions for health buffs in the fully equipped exercise rooms. And the hot tub. It's a great place to meet at Sundance Apartments. This is a neat place to live. So come to where it's happening, Sundance Apartments, and you'll get a free VCR, CD player, or $200, plus a truck for moving with just a nine-month lease. Sundance Apartments, where it's happening in the South. KBBO TV, Channel 42, Austin, Texas. Celebrate the spirit of Texas on 42. You see the field goal attempt here as the clock is running down, and it's a nice snap, a nice hole. <laughs> And he gets everything on that kick, and there's no win in Texas Stadium, so that was all legs, Scott. And that That's makes the score 24 to nothing at halftime. 45 nothing is a good one in the National Football League, let alone a high school state championship game. A little surprised at the way things have transpired here in the first half? Uh, very surprised, because Judson's uh, strength is their defense. They shut out four opponents going into uh, the state final game, but the versatility, the speed, the quickness of the Carter Cowboys is uh, outstanding. And Coach Freddie James has done a great job of taking advantage of the talent that his athletes have and making this a 24-0 first half. You know, he talked to